And I thought for today I'd tell you guys a little bit about what our breakfast is like every morning. Um, it's pretty common in Japan to have rice for breakfast and to also have uh, miso soup, which is the soybean based soup. Uh, the word miso has gotten to be pretty common all over the world now, so a lot of people are familiar with what that flavor is, but it is derived from soybeans if you're not familiar with it. And um, that's a pretty common base. And then we usually have some kind of what we call okazu, which is like a a main dish, essentially what you think of from Western culture, that you eat with the rice. Um, and typically that's fish, just because it's quick and easy to make in the morning for moms as they try to get everybody's breakfast ready. Um, the nice thing about having rice made is that you have a big pot of it and it can be served uh, whenever people are ready to eat. It isn't so common to see people forced together to eat breakfast together in the morning. Uh, usually everybody kind of just works their way out the door. Um, in a situation maybe where a child is running late, doesn't have time, then maybe a mom would make uh, onigiri or a rice ball uh, with uh, seaweed and rice for the child to take with them. Um, but generally it's considered really bad manners to eat while you're walking or when you're in your car in Japan. It's just not very common here. So we usually try to have a good breakfast. Um, now before we had kids, uh, my husband and I never ate breakfast. We just weren't big breakfast people from the beginning and we didn't really even bother. Um, kind of just hung out until lunch and ate then. <laughs> but um, I think uh, once we had kids and I definitely once my daughter started school, I realized I had to kind of be a little better uh, about making sure to make they make them breakfast every morning. So um, I do make a typical Japanese breakfast sometimes. Um, I do more frequently now that my daughter's in elementary school. She's a huge fan of rice. She wants to eat rice in the morning. She doesn't really like bread. Um, she wants to have uh, natto. She wants to have miso soup. She wants to have fish. She wants all those nice things to have for breakfast. Um, I still am a huge fan of bread in the morning and I have to have my coffee. If I have those two things, I'm good to go. But um, I think getting used to that, being a Westerner and living here, it can be hard to get used to the kinds of breakfasts because some mornings I just look at the rice and I'm like, well, I don't really think I can eat rice this early in the morning. It just feels weird. But, um, you know, it's just sort of a personal preference. So there's lots of choices of things you can do if you're running short on time. Um, lots of people cut corners. It's not considered, you know, bad or anything to use instant things when you wake up in the morning to make things kind of move along a little faster. Um, um, we oftentimes, if I'm only making like soup for one person, I usually will get these like instant miso soups and it's nice because the miso is in a, a little foil pack here. That's just re regular miso that you might buy at the store. So, And then the uh, little other pack that's in here is this uh, freeze-dried um, seaweed and in this case it has some other stuff in it too um, that you just put in there and you just pour boiled water on it and you're good to go. So nice lifesaver if you're running short in time you don't have to go through the trouble of making a whole thing of miso soup. Uh, miso soup doesn't take that long to make you just put a couple spoonfuls of miso in some boiling water and add some vegetables whatever you might have around. Sometimes I just don't have veggies or I don't have um, you just don't want to take the time to make it. Uh, standard things that are usually miso soup are like I said, seaweed, of course, uh, green onion is really common, chopped and put on top, and uh, tofu, of course, is very common. And then, depending on the seasons, you can put lots of other things. Sprouts are really yummy in it. Uh, potato is also good. Generally, if you put potato in, you don't put tofu in, though. Those are two kinds of things you don't mix up very often. But So, lifesaver to have instant if you don't want to have to go to all the trouble of making in the morning. Another thing now that it's getting colder, it's like really cold in the morning when we wake up, and I mentioned this in a previous video last year at winter time. It's so cold because there's no internal, you know, central heating system in the houses in Japan. So when we wake up, it's only like, you know, 14 degrees outside, and it's only 14 degrees inside our house too. That's in Celsius, in case anyone's wondering. So a uh, nice thing to have is some soup to warm up in the morning. And if we don't have miso soup, my daughter especially, she's a huge fan of these, um, potage soups and uh, once fall hits and winter hits these are really common uh, we don't really have like Campbell's canned soup we do have you can see them at the store imported from the states but there's only like three flavors there's tomato 
sometimes minestrone and uh, clam chowder. And that's it. Those are the only three choices. <laughs> so um, no chicken noodle. If you're a huge chicken noodle fan, I know when I was a kid, that's what I ate when I was sick. They don't have that here at all. So um, these are really popular though. They're just an instant powder pack style thing. And you just, uh, you know, pour them in a mug cup with some water and you're good to go. Um, the common standard flavor for these is corn. Uh, corn potage is the like go-to flavor for soups here. Um, my daughter really likes potato and veggie flavored ones. We also have a spinach one, which is really good. And then this tomato one is really good. It has like some cheese in it too. And these work really good too if you're making some other soups. You can use these as a base, which is nice. So um, if you want a quick instant kind of thing to drink or if you want to accent something you're cooking with, these are a lot of fun to use. And they're really quick and easy and they taste good. So, um, and Knorr is a good brand. Um, I, I always have a hard time saying it that way because I swear it has to be Knorr, but it's actually Knorr, so who knows, right? So soup, always a good thing to have when you're dealing with colder weather. Um, later on, when it's summertime and springtime, nobody wants to eat soup, and so we eat a lot of more cold things, and at that time my daughter is usually more inclined to eat cereal. Now, cereal is not a very common thing in Japan. It's slowly coming from the States, and most of what we have is either a direct copy of something from the states or it's imported. You can buy Kellogg's Frosted Flakes, you can buy um, Kellogg's uh, All Bran, and you can buy uh, uh, some Quaker kind of granola kind of things too. Um, and sometimes there's some of these kind of Disney, I know there's a Winnie the Pooh kind of cereal that mixes little characters Winnie the Pooh and things that kind of look like Cheerios. Um, but those are really kind of actually hard to find. If you just go to a local grocery store here, where I live, in the boonies, they don't have it. All they have is Siskorn. Yay! Because this is our copy of Frosted Flakes, uh, you know, Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. So, uh, good old Siskorn, he has been around since 1963, and it's just Frosted Corn Flakes. It's the same thing. And they're really good, I think. They're not like generic frosted flakes which taste terrible in the states these are really good and these also come in chocolate and then sometimes there's seasonal ones like maple syrup and uh, honey stuff like that so uh, pretty nice yummy little thing quick and easy to eat in the morning but not many people in Japan use this as an alternative for breakfast in the morning it is advertised that way but oddly enough a lot more times people eat this as a snack um, when kids come home from school they might have a bowl or they just eat it and munch it like uh, without any milk they just eat it as a snack that way um, also it's really commonly found in uh, ice cream sundaes you put this at the bottom and it kind of serves as a base for your ice cream and then when everything melts it kind of gets together it's really good so if they, they kind of do it as a trick to make the the ice cream sundae look bigger and cooler so they fill the glass about halfway up with that cornflakes and then they put a little bit of ice cream and then a whole bunch of other stuff so it doesn't cost that much money but uh, a really nice kind of tasty treat so another thing maybe the store might have this is like a granola that's made by the companies here Calbee they make a uh, granola here that has lots of different yummy stuff in it and uh, this is a pretty common thing you might find if you can't get a hold of some other cereals but there's, you know, if you live in Tokyo or something like that, in a bigger city, there's certainly a lot more options and choices. But if you're out in the boonies like I am, there's not that many choices. If you're used to having Rice Krispies or um, shredded wheat or uh, Cheerios, those kinds of things, um, I have never seen those here at all. So uh, you kind of have to get by with what you find and see how things go. I would say most of the time they tend to lean more towards the sweet side. It is kind of hard to get a hold of plain old non-frosted cornflakes. So that's sort of uh, kind of the choices that they have here. They're more not, like I said, more leaning towards the uh, sweet side and uh, you don't really find many things that are, you know, good for you. <laughs> so <laughs> I think they kind of copied from the States the sweet part of it all and maybe not so much like there's no Wheaties or uh, Cheerios or Rice Krispies or some of those ones that don't maybe sport so much sugar. Uh, but then on the flip side, you can't find like Lucky Charms or Captain Crunch here because those are way too sweet and they would never market well here. So uh, kind of a tricky balance if you're looking for cereal when you're in Japan. Um, I'd say the easiest thing to do is get some bread and make some toast if you're a fan of toast because that's always a nice thing to have for breakfast. Um, or uh, donuts and things like that are common too. So 
Uh, if you're trying to feel a little bit like you're at home when you're here and if the average daily morning breakfast of rice is getting you down, then you've got those choices too. 